Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're talking about floating point and how it's broken. Um, we're also going to show three different ways that you can fix this brokenness with floating point in Python. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so if you haven't seen this website before, um, I would I would recommend viewing it. It is 0 0.3 dot com. I might have had the wrong number of zeros, but that's that's part of the the laughs of this, um, which talks a little bit more about floating point math. I'm not going to go into all of these details here, um, but the reason that you know, or, or this is like a very common confusion that I see with new programmers, is that uh, wait, math is broken. Why why doesn't this work? And you can see like a lot of these programming languages, you know, represent uh, particular floating point numbers as you know some imprecise values. You can see 0 0.1 plus 0.2 in C uh, printed to 17 digits gives you 0 0.3000004. Um, and this is because floating points have a special representation of numbers, which is approximate. They have, um, what's it called? The exponent and the mantissa? I don't remember specifically, but the way the bits are laid out in memory, they approximate how a number actually exists. Um, and, you know, 0.1 plus 0.2 is a number that's not possible to represent exactly in floating point. And so this is you know one example of a floating point imprecision. Uh, floating points also have a bit of a maximum. So if you write out a very, very, very large floating point number, uh, you'll see that it's instead representing this as 1.1111e plus 46. And if we were to try and print this, uh, let's do 0.2f, so we get two decimals or two zero, we should get two zeros after this. Um, and if we print this, you'll see that after a while, the ones sort of shift into kind of these other numbers. And this is because uh, floating point can't properly represent exactly that same number. And this is kind of the core of the problem. And I want to talk about three different ways to fix that. Three, one, two, three, yeah, three. Um, so the first way to solve this is to use integers for everything in Python. Um, integers in Python have arbitrary precision, so you can make a number as long as you want. So you can even, you know, um, raise this to the fifth power or the hundredth power or whatever. And Python integers will expand to whatever size you want. In other programming languages, this is referred to as like a big integer. Uh, in Python, it's just built in. So anytime you're dealing with integers in Python, they could be as big as you want. Now, integers kind of uh, constrict you a little bit in what sort of numbers you can represent. So like, uh, you know, if you needed to represent some decimal positions, you wouldn't be able to use an integer. Um, although you could use an integer plus some, you know, divisor, uh, and we'll actually get to that as the second way as well. Um, I've kind of hinted at the other two ways, but uh, let's talk about the second way that you could represent arbitrary precision numbers, and that is with decimal. So if you import the decimal module, there is a class in the decimal module called decimal.decimal, .decimal, and uh, you have to pass a string into it to construct it, to have it you know, keep the arbitrary position. Uh, if you don't do that, so let's say we took that big number that we had before, um, you'll see that it has kind of uh, in, taken on those floating point imperfections here. So I actually wish this was an error, because I feel like creating a creating a decimal from a floating point number feels to me like it should be undefined behavior. It should just raise an exception, but I don't know. I didn't design the API, so I, I, don't, I don't have a say there. Um, but if you put this in a string, you'll see that it can represent this number exactly. And in fact, if we put 0.1, you'll see that it uh, supports this as well. So what decimal is, is it's an arbitrary position, arbitrary, pre uh, arbitrary precision uh, non-integer number. So you can represent any amount of decimals here. Um, and many languages have this built in as well. So like C Sharp has a, has a decimal, for example. Um, but yeah, you can represent, you know, as deep of a, uh, of a, you know, fractional number as possible. Um, so that's the second way you can solve floating point issues. Just deal with decimals everywhere um, and not, not deal with floating point internally. Um, and the third way is to use fractions. So fractions allow you to represent a... Uh, numerator and denominator, and those will be in the fractions module. So if you need to do a division, you can instead represent your division as a fraction. So you can do fractions dot fraction. I think uh, this will, yeah, so this will allow you to have 
you know, an arbitrary number that you can do math on. So you can, you know, multiply this by two and get a different uh, result there. Uh, did I accidentally pick a prime? No, there we go. So if we multiply it by three, you can see that it changed the, the, the denominator here. Um, and so you can represent kind of arbitrary divisions here and perform operations on them. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the three ways that you can get away from <laughs> float imprecisions. So, so one is to use integers, one is to use decimals, and one is to use fractions, um, as well as how you can convert between the two. But anyway, hopefully this was useful. Uh, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.